And good afternoon from the Welfare Club Ebu Vale. The scene, of course, of, of Wednesday's triumph by the Gwent side over the Springboks. But today we are back to the unofficial club championship when Ebu Vale entertain my steak. Now the Ebu Vale club are enjoying quite a successful season. They've already reached the final of the Floodlit Alliance Championship. A few weeks ago I referred to Bridge End as being the most consistently successful side of the 60s. That being so, I think it is fair to call Ebu Vale the most consistently successful side of the 50s because during that decade they won the unofficial club championship on no fewer than four occasions, a pretty good record. Currently they're doing very nicely, thank you, and two of their perhaps most successful players are Denzel Williams, the much-capped international prop forward, and their captain Arthur Lewis, who has been selected for next Saturday's trial at Pontypool in the centre position. So all looks set fair in good conditions for a game today against Meisteg. And it's Ebel Vale in the person of Mike Grindle kicking off. Some confusion already at the back for Meisteg, but the scrum half Brian Jones kicking and Grindle fielding just inside touch. It's a good start by Arthur Lewis, the captain. Meisteg, very neat gaining of ground in on the second bar. Just outside the Ebel Vale 25. Right wing for Ebel Vale. Yeah, okay, okay. Having put into that line out a scrum. My take scrum half. Brian Jones standing in for Ray Hopkins. Down with injury, but against the head, back to Grindle. <laughs> and the middle of the line out, Denzel Williams, lying one, two, three, four, fifth, not jumping that time. And the right wing for Ebervale, Westwood kicking through. Interesting to see three sweat banded forwards, one behind the other. The middle one of the three, Denzel Williams. In front of him is Gordon Ship. Great forward and that's Westwood again. Held back, but having knocked forward first, a scrum and nice take ball. Ryan Jones. Ryan Jones for my take. Interesting, Graham Mayer, his outside half. They're expecting the heel and the three quarters of my stake are staggered. And again against the head, that's the second time for Ebel Vale. That's Arthur Lewis, Norman Edwards. Billy Upton tackle, Grindle covering up, cleaning up behind them on the ten yard line. Still with the ball, gaining 10 yards. A robust, short player. And just too late. A very good forward carry on of the Mike Grindle run. Just inside the Mike take half. First penalty of the game to my stick. A front row infringement. And the fullback Richard Thomas coming up to take the kick. That'll be counted a knock on, and so a scrum my stay rather luckily gained about 30 yards of ground.
Five minutes play, gone a good attacking position for my stay. They're having difficulty in the front row. They haven't healed cleanly yet. Once again, Ebu Vale, that's three strikes against the head for Ebu Vale. Back of the Meisteg line on the right, number seven, Leighton Davis, the captain. Number seven for Ebu Vale is Dave Bitch. That's a very neat piece of work by Graham Mayer at outside half for Meisteg. Not supported quickly enough, and Ebu Vale are covering. Richard Thomas. Good opportunity here if he can link up. Richard Thomas running hard. Should be a chance on here. Arthur Lewis tackling Mr. Thomas on the 25 yard line. Nice take, have it. Well done, Billy, well done. There's Billy Upton with a man clear on his right, and his captain Norman Edwards coming inside. Norman Davis coming inside. And Norman Davis surely over, no grounded short of the line. Rather lucky for Ebu Vale that. It's Grindle with a long way to go, a lot of running to make. Richard Thomas will have a lot of running to do in that two quarter movement. run out of steam perhaps at that moment but a very fine piece of sustained attacking by my stay which the crowd here thoroughly appreciates <laughs> cleanly back to my stake Brian Jones to Mayer who knocks forward but the referee allowing advantage Ian Turner missing that pass back the result is that my stake comes through with Brian Howe, Billy Howe rather, heading the rush. Halfway between the halfway line and the Everville 25, a penalty to my stake and this could well be a kickable one. Richard Thomas with a full back for this afternoon, being called up for it. A distance of almost 45 yards and Richard Thomas for my stake. After 13 minutes attempting a penalty, it's high enough, is it long enough? Not quite. And it's grindled the field and put it safely into touch. No score after 13 minutes. Got him, I press it all. Come on, press it. Come on, I get up to him. Play inside the Abbeville 25. Good service from Jones to Mayer across to Upton and into the line Richard Thomas. But he can't get the pass clear to Norman Davis on the wing. Arthur Lewis running away and into touch inside his own 25. Staying on the attack in the 25, getting a lot of the ball from the line out. Mayer. And the ball forced out of his possession. Go on, Billy! Go on, Billy! Billy Pole. For my stake. Backed on there by the other centre for my stake, Jeff Hopkins. 15 minutes gone in the first half. My stake pressing 10 yards from the Ebu line. This time managing to get the ball away. Grindle, a good recovery from a poor pass and left wing for Ebu Vale doing good bit of work there Gareth Davis over Richard Thomas's head and finding it difficult to keep his feet on the slippery ground manages to scramble that away good comeback by Ebu Vale and play just inside the Mastake half Bale rocked slightly by the lively nice take forward. And once again, plenty of people. This is Leighton Davis, the captain in possession. A very good pass. And Billy Upton. Yes, Billy. Yes, Billy. A crafty kick, which forces the fullback to run the ball in 10 yards from his own line.
My big forwards are certainly going well this afternoon. The tall fellow, number three in the line, over whose head it went was Frufton. You're doing a lot of useful work in the line out. 15 yards from the touchline, this scrum. And some five yards now from the Ebbelvale line. Good attacking position for my stake, but it's an Ebbelvale ball. Lynn Turner. And my stake pushing and wheeling. And there's a try being, given, being scored by my stake. It's Ralph Evans, the blindside wing forward, making the score 3-0 to my stake, and well, they deserve that lead. And Leighton Davis, the captain of my stake, is going to attempt this conversion, not trusting it to the fullback Richard Thomas. Leighton Davis, who of course is well known as a former bridge end player and a physical fitness expert, has certainly got this my stake pack moving in lively fashion. 3-0 at the moment. And after 17 minutes play, it's clearly over and that's 5-0 my stake in the league. Twenty-five minutes gone in the first half. Five-nil, Maestag lead. Play on the Maestag twenty-five. Ebbelvale ball. Turner to Grindle, and this is Arthur Lewis feeding fullback and creating room for Westwood on the wing. But Westwood has gone eastward. He's gone into touch. Play inside the Maestag 25. Everwell more in the game now. Play still inside the Maestag 25. Everwell not getting the ball cleanly from the line out. being forced back my stager outside the 25 that's Turner an awkward one and an early tackle there that the referee ignored Grindle changing direction Arthur Lewis nice dummy scissors Arthur Lewis beautiful bit of running Norman Edwards and a fumble by the left wing Gareth Davis lost Ebervale a good chance there Seven minutes gone in the first half. Nice take leading 5 0 and defending desperately inside their own 25. A very quick heel, and Brian Jones came away quickly to rob Ebuvale of the advantage of the heel. It has to be Upton. And Upton has gained 30 yards to his side with a well judged kick. Five-nil, Mice take lead. Ebbelvale just inside their own half, and it's Mice take coming away. Mayer, a kick this time. He's opened up several times. It's Turner under it for Ebbelvale and the fumble. In trouble. Notice how quickly there are three Mice take forwards there. But a good breakthrough has brought Ship. He's got Westwood clear on the wing. Denzel Williams packing down his tight head prop, that's him with the sweatband. He's got 29 caps for Wales and an experienced tourist who went to Wales to New Zealand with the Welsh side recently. Oh, Nearly half an hour's play in the first half. My stake leading 5-0. Play outside the Ebbelvale oh, 25. My stake healing well, controlling it. Already it's across the line as far as Upton with Norman Davis chasing, but Tubby in position. Uh, 
and Norman Davis picked for the trial next Saturday for my stake puts in it's Howells who feeds Turner Grindle a change of direction by Norman Edwards and a tackle by Leighton Davis supported by Billy Pohl for my stake and my stake come away Upton a fumble was it a knock on referee says yes Five nil, my stake lead. Play inside the my stake half. Awkward ball for Grindle. Grindle, who knows Lewis's play very well, and Grindle coming round to take the return pass. The ball in play for Thomas, the fullback for my stake. And a nicely judged kick by Thomas. Inside the Ebelvale 25, my save lead 5 0. A good line up knocked back by Poe, and already the might take back the hand. A quick tackle there by Norman Edwards on Upton. And here's a good chance of a breakaway. How oh, who's the fastest man of this little bunch? Is it Arthur Lewis or is it Norman Davis kicking ball out of play and conceding a five yard scrum? <laughs> Play five yards from the Ebervale line, from the Mystag line. Mystag leading 5 0, and it's an Ebervale ball, and the heel, and the penalty against Mystag for offside should give an easy three points to Ebervale. Fullback Tubby for Ebu Vale, a score 5-0 to my stake at the moment, and if this goes over, it is 5-3. And on the Ebu Vale 10-yard line, 5-3 to my stake, Mayor Upton into the gap. Tavi knocked on. Referee Mr. Kelleher came well into the 25 to award the knock on. Well, perhaps an interesting look at the Mystag pack. Leighton Davis, their captain at number seven. Then Ralph Evans, the try scorer, the blindside forward. And it's a very awkward ball back which Arthur Lewis has to put back in touch <laughs> 35 minutes gone 5-3 to score my stake leading ship to Turner that was a very awkward fumble Grindle did well to get that ball at all but Ebuvale have lost a lot of ground through their slip shot handling. Five minutes to half time. My stake attacking and healing. Brian Jones, the wing coming in to make the extra man. Rather lost the chance there. Ship doing good defensive covering. Now can my can Ebuvale attack from their own line? They can't. And indeed a very awkward ball. The chance here for Mystag. And they missed a good opportunity there, and it's a dropout 25. It's near. The ball clear to his left wing lee. His left wing lee threw an awkward one in forward, I fancy. The referee allowing play to go on, but there was a knock on in that move. Now play going up to the halfway. The ship kicks on. Brian Jones in possession. Play warming up a little. This will be a scrum.
5-3 to Maistegen. Approaching half time and play just inside the Maistegen half. Turner for Ebuvale, who are waking up a little now. He's very sluggish to start. Thomas under it. Kicking direct, but uh, having no time, so although he doesn't gain any ground, he puts the ball out of play for the moment. And in that Ebuvale lineup, we can see number two, the very experienced hooker. The first man in the line is Les Greenslade. But the ball taken in the lineup isn't clean. Grindle has a lot difficult job, but this is Arthur Lewis going up to the 25, trying to take it on the burst. Play just outside the Mice Take 25. Mice Take ball. Brian Jones, Mayer inside the 25. Safely into touch. And Gareth Davis for Ebervale, the left wing. But my stake ball, they're doing well in that line out. Turner for Ebervale, Grindle, Edwards. Now there's a chance. This is Arthur Lewis. Very good linking up, Denzel Williams. And Gordon Schiff couldn't take that pass. What a pity it was. Very loose play, but my stay come nicely away. This is Norman Davis. Norman Davis has got a long way to go. And he has left Tubby standing. He's still got a long way to go. And he is going all the way without any hesitation. And putting the ball down under the bar for a very fine try. Making the score eight points to three. And the score of eight points to three to my stake is made up of a try by Ralph Evans converted by Leighton Davis, a second try by Norman Davis to a penalty goal kicked by Barry Tuffy. And the start of the second half with the shadows and sunlight on the ground and it's Mayer for my stake. Denzel Williams fielding, calling for a mark, making it. New rule at the mark allows a player to make it with both feet on the ground. He doesn't have to raise or dig his heel in. So Denzel Williams kicks infield. Ralph Evans under it for my stay. Return kick. Going in direct, so he loses about 30 yards of ground on that kick. And Ebuvale, a forward short because they've taken one out to replace Norman Edwards, injured in the first half. Turner fly kicking, awkward ball, so that Brian Jones returns a fly kick to touch. On the Mystake 10 yard line, 8-3 to score, Mystake lead. Turner testing Richard Thomas. First test passed. Fielded well, and second test passed, kicked well. Just outside the Mice Take 25, Everville on the attack. Well taken by ship. Turner. Turner slipped three tackles there, a chance for surely Arthur Lewis to put his wing over here. Arthur Lewis going himself for the, the line when perhaps a direct transfer to the wing might have got him over is brought down short of the line. The one remaining patch of sunlight on the ground. 8-3 to my stake but Ebbelville attacking. Play 
away, five yards from the mistake line, a good chance for Rebel Vale. They've got the ball back a little untidily. Turner. Grindle. Arthur Lewis. Still a chance because there's a man spare. Change of direction to the left wing Gareth Davis. And very luckily indeed the ball hit the corner flag. Why did the touch and then hit the corner flag? So it's a line out on the on the mice take line. Chance here surely for Meister for Abervale. The man outside him is the fullback going to score. And the fullback for Abervale, Barry Tubby, has scored, making the score 8 6 to Meister. And throwing in from the left wing for Abervale is Westwood. Right wing really playing left wing now for the throw in at any rate. Well taken by Howells, well supported there by his front row colleague uh, Lynn Lawson Jones. And it's the ever present Arthur Lewis in possession. Making ground Tubby, a wing a little bit slow coming up, but Westwood tackled into touch by Billy Pole for my stay. Eight six by Mastig. Billy Upton receiving a good straight pass. And Dave Finch shaking over tackle. Very useful piece of work by a substitute from wing forward. And Upton fumbled that one, so Ebu Vale are now crowding the Mastig line. Pole, a long kick into the open, dangerous this. This is Westwood, Barry Tubby. <laughs> 17 minutes gone in the second half, 8-6 my stake lead, play in there 25. They are having trouble, a chance for my for Abbeville and he lost the ball going over the line so it's a drop out 25, another chance gone astray for Abbeville. Up to a quick drop out, quite entitled to do this, doing well but running away from his support, nevertheless gaining ground, it's Westwood who has to chase back for that one. Ten yard line, my stake still leading 8 6. Well taken there by Brufton. Brian Jones, Mayor. Not a particularly well angled kick, but it's certainly got Epperville in trouble. Now they're away. This is Dave Finch coming away. The difference in the two sides this afternoon seemed to me that the mice take pack are very much sharper when the ball is loose. And Grindle there uh, conceding a knock on, therefore, mice take come five, ten yards nearer, just outside the Ebbervale 25. Abu Vail healing. No, it's my stay healing. Mayor kicking for the corner. Playing perhaps on the substitute uh, wing Finch. I call him the substitute wing, he's the wing forward. <laughs> and Leighton Davis, captain of my stay, is certainly keeping his pack going well. 10 yards from the Abbeville line. It's Abbeville defending again, although they're down 8 6. And it's Grindle chasing back for the minor. And the dropout 25.
And Doug Jones for my stake, starting a forward rush and going right down Glenn Turner, having to kick very hurriedly over his own head into touch. And my stake are pressing a bouvale now. It's Lee on the left wing for my stake to put into this line out. Not straight. Scrum 15 yards from touch and Ebbervale ball. <laughs> Disappointment to me this afternoon really has been the halfback play too of Ebbervale because there's not been the Scintillating performance I'm used to from Turner and Grindle. Penalty to Abu Vale, that'll get them out of trouble for the moment. But they do need Arthur Lewis to shake them into some sort of shape. This is Grindle now. Over Norman Davis's head. How quickly he collected that one. And Westwood claimed a mark before being propelled into touch and has been given it. Takes it back behind his 25 so that he can kick direct and touch, but very slight angle. And my stake on the attack on the Evervale 25, still lead 8 6. Mayer, little kick into the box, an awkward bouncing one. Upton nearly got away with that, but it's Richard Thomas now on the halfway line for my stake. A fumble. Our referee's whistle is to his wi lips, so it'll be a knock on. Twenty-three minutes gone in the second half, and Maestake leading, and Turner slipping a tackle around the scrum, kicking in field, but his forwards are nowhere in sight, and Thomas has ample time to get that ball away. He doesn't make a very good job of it, however. This is Howells coming across for now to Grindle on the halfway line. A good piece of work by Westwood, a bit of wrestling with the ball. The sort of thing we don't like to see, a bit of uh, overexcitement, that's all. And the referee has decided that the captain should be told about this. And as it's, it's Leighton Davis, the captain who was involved in that last fracas, it's understood, I think, by both of them that they're not going to have any more of this nonsense. And we've probably heard that injunction from Arthur Lewis. That's not the way to win, boys. Play football. And on the Maestake 10 yard line, it's Norman Davis going to throw into this line out. And a penalty given there against the Maestake forward. Grindle across to Gareth Davis. Arthur Lewis changing the direction of the attack. Linking up now with his forwards as Turner up at a forward pass. Ebu Vale suffering a certain amount of frustration because their moves behind the scrum are frustrated by good, quick, keen tackling. On the mistake, 10 yard line, a controlled heel. Mayer into midfield. Tavi on the first bounce. Turner. Dave Finch. Tavi. Dave Finch. And Moyle. And a little bit of reckless piling into that mall there by the forwards. 
Evervale, plenty of spirit, but not much polish this afternoon. And again, Brian Jones got a good pass away. Under it is Westwood, and under it for Maestig, Norman Davis. Big, tough fellow, Lynn Jones for Evervale. And he got the loose ball, so a good pass from Turner. Once again, good tackling has nailed the centre thrust. Ball still in play. And a line out just inside the Maestake half. And Evervale getting possession this time from the line out. And a penalty to Evervale. Offside, and a little bit of rough play, I'm afraid. So, another 10 yards gained. Richard Thomas keeping a cool head. Move with him, move with him. And making sure of his touch. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Halfway between the halfway line and the Mice Take 25, 8 6 Mice Take lead. Well taken there. Grindel there, supported by the forward, but this time it's Brian Jones coming away. And it's gone direct into touch. And halfway between the halfway line and the Maestake 25. Referee now cooling down the forwards. And the penalty given to Maestake. Richard Thomas coming up for this one. Maestake leading 8-6. Well, I would think less than 10 minutes to go. Mistake showing themselves this afternoon capable of containing anything that Ebbovale have to offer. Ship picking up. Billy Upton. A good turn of speed by Upton. And looking for the passing man, Brian Jones was there. And a good rush, but a knock on in the process. Six, my stake lead, and are inside the well inside the Ebbovale half. That's Ebbovale ball into the line out from Graham from Glyn Turner. A penalty offside the scrum half of my stake. And ten yards conceded. How silly this is to challenge a referee's decision. This is Mike Grindle. Gareth Howells on the ten yard line from my stake. Billy Pole counter attack. And how quickly he knew exactly what to do and where there would be a gap for that ball to roll in on the 25. And on the 25 yard line, Maestig attacking. Leighton Davis breaking quickly to send Grindle across the field. A loose pass, was it forward? Certainly Sherrod is up there and Leighton Davis is up there. Leighton Davis, that is. A chance for a score, and Mayer's going to score behind the post for my sake. A fine rush, Leighton Davis handled, and Mayer it is who makes the score 11-6 to my stake. And Leighton Davis, the captain, he's put one over and he's missed one from a similar position. So let's see if we can make it two out of three. This one is over, and it's 13 points to six. Well taken there by Brufton. Smuggled to Cox. 
number 25. <laughs> Play just outside the Mice Take 25. Mice Take leading 13 6. Come on, Mice Take now. Come on, now. Turner collects. And at least three Evervale players there in with a chance and one knock on. So a scrum just outside the 25 and a Mice Take ball. A certain amount of individual skill shown behind the Evervale scrum, but the general handling of their backs has not been good this afternoon. Compare that taking of that pass, that no pass. And indeed the wing pass taken by Glyn Lee. Confusion there between Howells covering what business he had to interfere with this full back then. And a penalty to Evervale for offside in that ball. They've taken quickly now, Glyn Turner across. Arthur William, Arthur Lewis playing on his own, kicking directly from an open space. Richard Thomas, rather fortunately, fly kicking the touch. As my stake tired a little there. Ten yards then from the my stake line. Turner. And Moyle there uh, knocking on as he attempted to pick up. And so a nice take ball. Nice take obviously now just holding on to a seven point lead. Brian Jones for my stake. Not finding touches is Tubby going to possibly I thought he might drop, but there's no point at this stage of course. Arthur Lewis, Andrew Davis, Westwood. That's the final whistle. And my stay go away triumphant with the score 13 points to six. Good afternoon from the Athletic Ground Penarth, the home of the Penarth Rugby Club for the last 40 years, from the year 1923, because their previous ground had become first a market garden and then was used for post-war building. But the history of the club itself, of course, goes back very much further than that. In fact, it goes back to the year 1879. And this is its badge, featuring three distinctive things. A bear, which gives pen arth. A boat, which gives the nickname of the Seasiders to the club, and the Welsh Dragon declaring its affinity with Welsh rugby. And beneath it, a motto, Cangchori er Llesant, loosely translated, advise for our improvement. And perhaps this is a fitting motto for any rugby club, and it happens also to be the motto of Penarth Town. And inside the club museum, a rather remarkable trophy, a springbok head possessed by a club that has never played the South Africans. The trophy was presented to the Penarth Club by this barbarian side, the only victors over the 1960-61 Springboks. And since this has been the proverbial Easter home of the barbarians since 1901, where more appropriate for it to rest than in this clubhouse, the home of the Penarth Rugby Club. In its long history, the Penarth Club has produced many international players, seven in fact, 
and the first of these was R. M. Garrett, captain of the club on four successive seasons who won his caps before the turn of the century. Then the club had to wait until the 1905-1906 season when J. C. Dyke and his brother L. M. Dyke were both capped. Another well-known cap, Gomer Hughes from this club, but perhaps the most famous of all the caps is Jack Bassett. This famous player was not only captain of Penarth five times, but he of course captained Wales and was also a British Lion. A very fine fullback indeed, an automatic choice for Wales in the early 30s and happily still with us today and living just a stone's throw from this ground. Many other well-known players have also appeared in the Penarth colours and among these we include Frank Trott, captain of the side in 1938-39 but perhaps better known as the Cardiff and Wales fullback and the present Cardiff club secretary. Then there's Kevin Bush, a trialist for Wales. And that personality scrum half of the 50s, Bernard Templeman, whose prowess at seven-a-side rugby will be well remembered. And the connection with the perhaps higher grade of rugby, Welsh rugby and Cardiff rugby, is remembered in the presence of Jeff Beckenham as the present coach of this side, Jeff being, of course, the former Cardiff and Wales hooker. Today's visitors are everywhere, led out by their captain, Arthur Lewis. And this afternoon they feel at fullback Barry Edwards. At the quarter line is Cliff Hillman, Alan Tubby making his first appearance of the season in the centre, Arthur Lewis and Gareth Davis. The halfbacks, Mike Grindle, Glyn Turner. In the forwards in the front row, Gareth Howells, Les Greenslade and Lawson Jones. And Peter Eastwood, Bernard Williams, that's Denzel's younger brother, and in the back row, Ga Graham e Evans, Peter Moyle, and Ian Morgan. And in the plain shirts, Penarth, who have their captain, Alan Jones, on the right wing. At fullback, Jim Struthers. In the centre, Alan Stamp and Kevin Woodham. Left wing, Peter Cott. Their halfbacks, John Wintle and Steve McLucas. Front row, John Erskine, Bryn Davis, Gwyn Prescott. Second row, Ken Davis, Mike Edwards. Back row, Colin Jones, Alan Watts, and Keith Edwards. And today's referee, Mr. Gareth Evans of Lacher. And Ebu Vale come to this ground today, having had seven successive wins. They are lying sixth in the unofficial championship table and a very impressive side all round. Penarth, having their familiar struggle to keep up with the big boys, won convincingly last Saturday against Bridgewater and are hoping this is the turn of the tide for them. And Kevin Woodham kicking off for Penarth. And from the first kick out, a knock on, and the first scrum. And Glyn Turner, number nine for Ebu Vale, who toured with the Welsh side of the Argentine. This is Grindle. And the full back, Jim Struthers. Nice and strongly with Woodham alongside him. Good bit of work by Penarth, and a very useful kick nailed to the goal line. Rousing start by Penarth. Penarth almost on the Evervale line. Well shielded by the Evervale forwards. And the scrum half's kick to touch. Seven minutes gone in the first half and no score. And Alan Jones for Penarth. Just outside the Evervale 25. Nicely back, McLucas, Wintle, and Wintle, slowly selling a good dummy but not able to get the ball away. Abouville ball this will be, following the throw forward, the involuntary throw forward by Wintle. Turner, being very harassed, it's Grindle to kick. Eight minutes gone in the first half, no score. Play halfway between the halfway line and the Abervale 25. Penarth on the attack and McLucas coming around the back of the line. 
Bit of cleaning up work there by John Erskine for Penarth. It looks to be Ebbovale scrambling this ball away and just as they get it away in the person of Peter Eastwood, penalty for not playing the ball and Ebbovale come quickly away. Grindle, Arthur Lewis. Tubby following. And just clearing the lines. In the line out for Pinarth, number two, Bryn Davis in the front, followed by number five, that's Mike Edwards. Then there's Ken Davis. Awkward pass, Tuffy feeding Arthur Lewis, just as Mike Edwards collars him as the fullback Struthers into the line. Good attacking position, Cod taking the inside pass, but a foot in touch and it'll be a line out. Nearly a quarter of an hour gone in the first half, no score. A line out halfway between the halfway line, the Evervale 25. Evervale ball from Cliff Hillman, but looks like a pin off ball from McLucas. Winter couldn't be up on that one, and it's Woodham. A slither there from the right wing, Hillman, and counted as a, as a an offside. Yes, the forward coming back interfered with play, and this is a penalty to Penarth. A distance of about 35 yards, just clear of the 25 and the angle very near touch and this is Woodham, Kevin Woodham. And it's over and first blood to pin off, three points to nil after a quarter of an hour's play, a penalty by Woodham. And this is rather a shock to the Ebervale side. Penarth have shown all the aggression so far. They're helped by a stiff breeze, but now it's for Ebuvale to get back into the game. Barry Edwards to restart, the fullback. 3-0 down, and under it is McLucas for Penarth. And the top try scorer for Ebbuvale to throw into this line out, Gareth Davis, scored 14 tries this season. That's Turner trying to collect, overrunning, and